Well, hello. It's a very snowy morning in April, Friday morning, and I'm about to do the first harvest for 2018. And so I just wanted to do a quick video. This is some Tatsoi that is our own Oxbow Farm saved seed. And originally this strain I pulled out of a mix of um, a seed mix that I got from Wild Garden Seed, Frank Morton's uh, seed company videos. But these Tatsoi are really beautiful and they're kind of a more upright. They're very similar to Yukina Savoy, which is a strain of Tatsoi that's pretty popular. Um, it might even be a strain of Yukina Savoy but uh, they sell really well for us. They're really tasty, fast growing, a little more upright than other Tatsoi, so they're a little easier to keep clean. And so I really like them. And this is the second or third generation of seed that we've saved ourselves. This is uh, also a Frank Morton mustard originally. This is Jagger mustard, and then there's some Pak Choi there and then some Mizuna starting up. And then over here we've got a big bed of Senposai. So anyway, as we're going along here, you can see the plants are growing, growing, growing fairly uniformly. And then, oh, what is this? This is a different plant. It is a different color, different leaf shape, and it's a much larger plant in general but this is all coming from the save seed. So this is what I would say, this is an example of a cross that occurred when I was saving seed. I clearly had some, what I would guess would be pak choy that was uh, flowering at the same time that I saved this seed lot. And this is an F1, I'm pretty sure this is an F1 tatsoi pak choy cross. And I actually really like this thing it's got these really interesting sort of very rounded leaves with a narrow petiole and the leaf comes very restricted right to uh, the petiole there's no uh sort of little uh flags of leaf on the edge of the petiole so it's kind of a very clean petiole um and then the transition is very sharp between the leaf and the petiole, which is just kind of interesting, but it seems to have sort of a narrow petiole, more like a tatsoi, rather than the, the thickened petioles that you get on the pak choys. So that's kind of cool. And so we're walking along, and boom, here's another one. This one's very similar. This one has a few more uh, flaggy kind of extra leaflets on the petioles, some of them anyway but it's also very similar. And so that's another F1 out cross. And so we keep coming, keep coming. And then we come and here's another one, but this one is very different. It has much more uh, leaf edging on the petioles going all the way. There's not that sharp transition from the leaf to the petiole like there is on those other two plants. So this is, maybe an outcross with uh, something else or the genetics are a little bit different. Um, I don't like this one as much, although it's certainly kind of a cool thing, but it's not as interesting to me visually. There's one that I harvested. And then we come all the way down to the end and here's another one. So that is three in you know four outcross plants in a population of you know maybe a hundred uh tatsois so that's a, a fairly low level of outcrossing but this one has got that very similar sort of tiny little leaflets but then a really sharp transition so like with those three plants what i think i'm going to try and do is dig up these three plants plant them next to each other in a little nursery bed and let them go to seed and see what the F2 seed gives me. And it's probably gonna give me a mixed population that I'm gonna to have to select from. And 
one thing that like all of the modern seed industry regulations and you know good industry practices have done which is deleterious i think to like home seed saving and home gardeners <coughs> seed saving is they've sort of given people all these really strict attitudes towards purity and uniformity which cause people to see something like this and say oh no my seed is contaminated with off types i have to throw it out and buy new stuff instead what you should be like oh look this is an off type is it interesting enough to keep and is it interesting enough to like turn into something new you know i i feel like people should be <clears throat> more confident in their abilities to visually assess what they like and whether or not they think something is worth keeping rather than just like being these strict purity nazis you know and because like if you if you really look at the history of agriculture you know pretty much every domesticated crop was domesticated by people prior to the prior to the invention of scientific agriculture you know science has only really been applied the science of genetics and you know deliberate uh understanding of like selection and uh sexual uh transmission of genetic material and all of those things that's only really been scientifically understood for the past 200 years and if you really really look at the history of you know crop domestication every single important domesticated crop was domesticated by people who almost certainly couldn't even read let alone have a scientific understanding of of what was going on and so all of the selection that was occurring was based on their visual uh selection of characteristics that they liked and every single gardener and farmer has the ability to make those same kinds of decisions about their own seed and their own crops and you know if you like something save its seed and it doesn't matter if it's a cross or if it's uh not what you originally purchased if it's better or more interesting or appeals to you in any way you know go ahead and save that seed and don't worry about all the rules regarding seed saving i mean i feel like people are so inhibited by you know the rules laid down in books like seed to seed or or anything you know talking about you know and all this stuff about isolation distances and uh you know what have you rules about you know uh cross pollinating and isolation and purity and minimum population size and da 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 da, da. none of that stuff actually matters most of the time you know and you can get away with a lot and i feel like it has no reflection on the way you know most crops were domesticated and it has no reflection on what the way that you know people have saved seed historically okay it's just about the end of april and yesterday or the day before yesterday i harvested almost the entirety of this bed um just a little bit of mizuna left there one pak choy over there and then there's still these three outcrossed uh tatsoi pak choy hybrids here and what i'm going to do you can see they're much further along and they've bolted um and one thing to keep in mind about the asian brassicas especially all the you know chinese cabbage family brassica rapa asian greens is they have a very even though they are technically biennials their chilling requirement to induce flowering is extremely low and they also have so it's very you can treat them basically as an annual if you plant them in the spring and so all of these so you can see the mizuna here is flowering too um all of your early spring high tunnel or early spring planted asian greens are gonna bolt and go to seed which is good and bad um and these are already bolting and i probably should have tried to get them outside in sort of a nursery bed 
earlier than this because one of the downsides to them bolting like this is they're much less cold hardy once they've started to flower. So these guys might get killed if we have a sufficiently hard cold snap, you know, in the next month or two before frost, you know, the last frost. But I'm gonna try transplanting these out into like a nursery so that they can, um, so I can hopefully collect some seed. And I almost certainly will not be getting seed from this main floret, um, these first flowers to open. But you know, that one other thing about, you can see all the side shoots down there, those are all gonna have flowers. So even if you lose this first main floret, you, there's, this plant has a, a tremendous capacity for producing just an enormous amount of seed. And uh, so this one's probably, this one's pretty far along. This one was the most far along. You can see it's even opened its first flower here. Um, classic brassica flower. This one on the end is a huge plant and it's not quite as far along, but I really like how robust this plant is. And then we've got one plant that was over here in the other bed in the second succession of the totsoy. Whoa, excuse me. And you can see there's the flower there, but this plant is a lot less stretched it hasn't you know it's a younger plant it hasn't bolted as far even though this bed is out near the outside of the edge of the, the high tunnel and it got colder and all the totsoys in this ex this uh succession bolted faster than the ones in the middle bed um there's some really nice oxbow farm mustard greens they these are um uh, i'm going to talk about them right now Okay, so let me just, you know, lift these plants and I'll show the nursery bed that I'm going to make. Okay, so here we have the nursery bed set up. And I've got the four uh, Tatsoi crosses here clumped really closely together. One, two, three, four. And then right next to them, I've got uh, four more plants of a uh, mustard breeding project that I have going on. So these are Brassica juncea. These guys are Brassica rapa. So there should be not too much outcrossing between the two, but if there is, that would be cool anyway. So um, yeah, so I'm just gonna cover these with row cover and we'll see if they survive and if I can get some good seed off of them. Hopefully I just need two of them to survive to give me some seed, you know? And uh, it's gonna be a pretty cool and wet the next couple of days. It's kind of drizzly right now. It's getting drizzling on my camera. So that's good conditions for uh, eliminating transplant shock. It's not gonna be hot and dry. And I'm gonna cover with this row cover over these little low hoops and give them some more protection. And hopefully they will survive the coming cold snaps and give us some good seed and then we can grow it out this fall and see what it looks like.